Okay, so we saw this. We saw the scope readings there, and you notice uh, that I mentioned that I had my my ground lead for the scopes for both of those sensors were hooked up to a ground point. Okay, now when you're looking at when you're looking at a, a variable reluctance sensor where they have a floating ground, and most scopes, 99% of them out there, all the ground connections, the common connections that's on the channels, they're all tied together. So you don't want to be hooking uh, um, your scope, for example, like this one here. You put your high lead on there, and then you come back and you put your ground connection on here, and then you take and put your other one on there, and then you get some cross feed through your common points. Because it's actually looking for a ground connection, basically. However, the signal 2 that we were actually looking at, that 620 millivolts, that's peak to peak, that is actually not the true amplitude of that sensor, okay? But what I did, what I did here to show you to start with is just the uh, putting them both up there together, which you can do, but just keep in mind that is not the true output voltage of that sensor. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at one sensor, we're going to look at uh, the left, we'll look at the right, and then we'll be seeing the true voltage that each one of these sensors are putting out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stab, we're going to look at the left front, I'm going to stab that one, okay, and I'm going to remove the second channel because I'm only going to look at one sensor at a time. I'm going to look at this here for the high uh, signal, and then I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to stab this point for the signal return and we're going to look at only that one channel now when we look at this we will see a higher we should see a higher output voltage which is a true indication of what that sensor is actually putting out and then we can come back we'll look at this one we'll stab that one and then we'll stab the right front so that's what I'm going to do in the next step I mentioned earlier we're going to look at one speed signal right now my channel A is hooked up on pin 10. My sensor return is on 24. Not looking at this one here, as I mentioned about the uh, floating ground having a voltage on there. Now I have a I have a fluke scope meter also. It does have isolated inputs, so I could actually look at these signals and I could stab it right there, and I could take my other channel and stab it right there. But I figured the picoscope would be a little bit easier to see, so that's why I'm just going ahead and use it. All right, I want you to see that uh, the, the uh, transmission is now in drive. All right, it's at idle, it's not being uh, accelerated, and it's just sitting there just running right along. The other side is doing the same thing. Looks like it's running also at pretty much the same speed as this one here is. All right, as you can see, there's maybe a little bit of noise on here. Um, let's take a little closer look at that. Okay, let's grab my window here, we'll zoom in. So you can see we got a little noise. Let's activate a filter. Maybe we'll try to clean it up a little bit. Okay, now you notice you see how this is kind of going a little bit up and down. Well, it's a very, very slight imperfections far as in the RPM while it's turning. So this thing is so sensitive it's going to actually pick that up. But that's nothing to really worry about. There's no problem there. Okay, we can do the same thing, say for filter B, I mean uh, channel B, so we can filter that out a little bit. You can see that it looks a little better. Okay. Uh, we can actually do some measurements in here. Let's say we want to look at what the, say, the I'd be interested to know, say, what's the peak-to-peak -peak voltage? That would be very important to know. Say on channel A, right? And we want to know for the whole trace. That'll give us an average. Okay. So if we look down here, we see that our average voltage is uh, 620.2 millivolts. Now, you know, being at this small uh, um, an RPM here, it's not turning very fast. Our, it's expected that our signal is going to be very low, okay? Now, as the, as the wheels start turning faster and faster, then this here voltage will start getting higher and higher. In fact, some of the things that's going to actually influence this, <coughs> this voltage level 
first if we have a stronger magnet that means a stronger magnetic field that will give you a higher output voltage if you put more turns on the coil that will give you a higher output voltage your air gap will influence that voltage and the type of material that the reluctor teeth are made out of in fact uh, uh, if it's more ferrous then you will get a higher voltage out so some of those things uh, you know just kind of keep in mind also what you want to keep in mind is the faster that it turns then the as I mentioned as the voltage gets higher and higher well the frequency will also get higher and higher uh, since we did that measurement we can just uh, let's look at the measurement and let's can say get one for let's look at B okay we also want to get uh, peak to peak remember we were talking about the voltages there to see what if they compared all right, now look over here at B. It's 571.7 millivolts. Now we're talking about 29, well, 29, we're talking about 40 millivolts. And we could actually have a very slight difference in, uh, you know, a, an RPM difference between these two uh, rotors turning. <clears throat> so is that a big flag to say that, yes, we need to replace that sensor? In my mind, no. So I'm not worried about that, but that gives you an idea. You can kind of see what's going on there. Uh, let's see. Another thing we can look at is we can look at the frequency of this, okay? We can also see, let's go ahead and let's just get a measurement for that, all right? So let's look at channel A. <clears throat> we want to get a frequency. We'll put that in there. Whole trace. And by the way, you can, if, you, if you're only interested in some certain part there, you could actually get it between the rulers. Okay, so we're going to do the whole trace. Now, we look down here. We see the frequency. Uh, the value is, uh, I was running at is 96.81 hertz. Okay, and we got a mean value. We got a max value. We have an average value. So that looks pretty good. Now, let's take and let's see what we have for channel B. Remember, this is our right front wheel speed sensor. Uh, so I didn't want that one. So let's say we're going to edit that. I didn't want the AC RMS. I also want to get the frequency. So let's see what we got down there on that one. <clears throat> now you see, this one here is running, it's got 87.79 hertz. Well that tells me right there that this here is not running quite as fast as this one up here. If I have a little bit of slippage, you know, through the, um, the transmission here <clears throat> because if this was running faster then this here frequency would go up remember the faster it goes the higher the frequency along with the output voltage so I think at this point you know we're, we're looking pretty good okay we're looking at the left front wheel speed sensor now isn't this very interesting you notice it looks like it's dropping out in here and it goes along running pretty good pretty good pretty good then a little drop out again and there's some more stuff going on right here. Um, so this may require a little bit more investigations. Looks like maybe something is going on with uh, maybe one of the teeth on the reluctor here. Uh, goes goes along looking good. Might be a little bit of a wheel bearing issue. Of course I didn't see anything but I can look into that a little bit further. Okay, here's what I want to show you. I'm going to stop it. I want to show you, let me get to another screen here, get to another buffer. Let's get one that's got a pretty good amplitude. There you go. Um, you remember before it was 620 millivolts, so I'm on the top of this peak right here. And I'm also going to come right down. Eh, that looks about right. Now, look what we got. You see now how it's 1.1 volts peak to peak? So that's what I wanted to illustrate. Once you stab across the sensor like that, now you can actually see what the vo what is the true output voltage that is uh, putting out uh, like I said before because of the floating grounds on here you can only look at one sensor if you want to get a true output out of it okay so in the next shot what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this here right front spe uh, wheel speed sensor and what's uh, what's a little bit crazy is this is the side that's supposed to be good that the um, ABS uh, the computer did not throw a code up for this one all right so that'll be the next thing let's look at the other side Okay, now we're looking at the right front wheel speed sensor. Now, have you ever seen any 
any signal look any clearer than that. Notice this one here. You don't see it dropping out. And this is the one that gave us the code as far as the scanner. So is it possible the scanner could have had its uh, sensors mixed up? Yeah, it's possible. I haven't seen it for myself, but I have read about it. So, um, so now it looks like maybe we have an issue with the left front wheel speed sensor because the right here is looking really, really good. Don't see anything wrong with that. Let's take a look at the measurement on this, see what we got. We're looking at the true output voltage of this now. Uh, that is 922 millivolts. A little bit slower than the other one, but again, we don't know for sure what kind of RPM we're running here. It's possible that this one is, uh, you know, running a little bit slower while we're getting this a little bit less voltage. But the main thing is you do not see this thing dropping out like the other one was. And it could have been, maybe I had a bad connection, but, um, so I'm going to have to go back and reinvestigate that, look back in that other one again. But anyway, I think this is a good time to close it out. I think I'll probably just close this video series out. Uh, I'll do a little more investigating on this. Uh, it's very possible I didn't get a good connection on the other one. Um, I showed you guys about how some troubleshoot some of this stuff. Uh, hope you learned something about it. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the videos. So anyway, I'm going to take care and uh, appreciate you guys for watching.